G.I. Joe is one of the most recognizable toy franchises of all time. There have been countless iterations of these fictional American heroes, but in 2020, Hasbro gave us the newest iteration, the Classified series. And that's 112 scale, my favorite. So today, I'm gonna make an Urban Warzone diorama for G.I. Joes. I'm making this diorama for a YouTuber you may know. Here are some hints so you can figure out who it is. I've made dioramas for this person several times on my channel. Over the years, I've acquired both of these figures from this YouTuber. And I'm from the same state as the person that I'm making this for. So who do you think it is? Leave me a comment and let me know your guess. Man, all that talking made me thirsty. <sighs> Sorry. Let's get started. I'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. The first thing I'm gonna do is carve multiple brick walls using a fresh X-Acto blade and a T-square on some XPS foam. I use the T-square to anchor myself to the foam edge, which will ensure my bricks are square as long as my XPS foam rectangle has 90 degree corners. Once all the bricks are carved, I use a clay sculpting tool that I got years ago at Dollar General to indent all my bricks. Then I added some destruction, but I don't have footage for it. But don't worry, I do have footage of how I carved and destroyed this concrete wall. I use the same approach to add destructions to my brick walls. Walls like this break down brick by brick, or in this case, by concrete section. So the edges and the areas between the concrete slabs are good places for physical decay. I use a knife, flathead screwdriver, and my fingers to eat away at those areas little by little. Now it's time for some bullet and shrapnel damage. I use my clay sculpting tool and my X-Acto knife to create the divots for these imaginary projectiles. I'm not a ballistics expert and I don't know much about physics, so I made sure to look at a lot of reference material when creating my destruction. When I researched how bullets affect concrete and brick, I noticed some ripple cracking around the epicenter of the main decay point. In order to mimic that, I pressed a rolled up ball of tin foil over many of my bullet holes. I want this whole diorama to look like a cohesive urban war zone, so I make sure to measure my concrete wall next to my decayed brick wall to ensure the points of destruction make some sort of sense. I use that approach to guide where I place the bullet holes on all of my other diorama wall pieces. Then to add further texture to my concrete wall, I use this, lightweight wall spackle. Applying it with an old gift card lightly all over the concrete area. Doing this is going to seriously pay off when it comes time to paint the wall. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is actually two dioramas in one. And my goal is to make this as versatile as possible, which means I need to magnetize all the wall pieces to the base. Using these copper tubes saves me a ton of time. They are the exact diameter of the magnets I use, and they are sharp enough to cut down into the foam. Once those round indents are cut, I use my box cutter to carve out the width of the magnet so I can insert it flush with the top of the foam base. Then I place some hot glue in the hole I carved and push the magnet down in there. Now I place another set of magnets on top of the previously installed set and press my walls down on top of them. This helps me ensure I place the magnets in the exact right spot on the bottom of both walls, which makes them interchangeable. So after I carve out some holes and install the magnets in the wall pieces, they can be switched out however my mystery customer likes. Now that all my walls are anchored into their spots with ceramic magnets, I'm going to start building out the details of my base, which is going to showcase some cracked tile flooring. So I take my Proxon hot wire foam cutting table to slice up some two inch by two inch foam tiles. Then I pop them in an old coffee grounds container with some rocks and tin foil and give the tiles a good shake. This gives them a nice, worn down look. I start placing the tiles down without glue to give myself an idea of the look I want to achieve and then I turn back to my hot glue gun to permanently install these. Since this is a war zone, I pick some tiles to simulate breaks and cracks and then glue them in such a way that lends to the semi-destroyed aesthetic of the scene. I do need to be careful though, because I want the customer to be able to stand their figures reliably on the diorama. 
Once the interior tile flooring is done, I refocus my attention on the exterior parts of these diorama bases, cutting, texturing, and gluing down some thin project foam to serve as my sidewalks. I also use the lightweight wall spackle to texture them, just like I did on the wall piece earlier. Next up, I used thin corkboard sheets that I got at Dollar Tree to simulate asphalt. I've never done this before, but I've seen my friends Oilers Workshop and High School Creations do it tons of times, so I was excited to try it. Normally I would glue these down, but these sheets have a side that includes adhesive, so I just peel off the protective sheets and press them down on the foam. Now it's time to lay the groundwork for our paint job. I prime my pieces with a mixture of paint and Mod Podge and apply a coat of gray to my sidewalk areas, black to my asphalt simulation, and reddish brown to the brick portions. It turned out that I went a little too heavy on the red in my mixture, so I covered that with a coat that had a lot more brown mixed in. Then I applied several coats of nutmeg brown to the tile area. I chose all these priming colors based on the decided upon color scheme for the final paint job, which is light brown brick and earth tones for the tile. After everything dried, it was time to start adding some realism with washes. One of my favorite ways to get a realistic concrete look is to dab some black wash around with a paper towel. I do this on all the sidewalk surfaces and the concrete wall I carved, paying special attention to the bullet holes and the cracked edges, which need some extra coats to get the desired effect. I mentioned earlier that the bricks will be a light brown color scheme. Because of that, I do a base of Anita's Desert Sand on all the brick wall pieces. After that, I mix some darker and lighter shades of this color so I can add some subtle color variation to the brick layout. Then I select random bricks and paint them with the different color mixtures I just mentioned. Sometimes I choose to paint a single brick and other times I do a grouping of two or three at a time with the color. When I am done applying paint with the first color, I move on to the second and the third until I end up with three to five different brick colors integrated in the diorama. This helps me achieve realism because many times brick walls have different colored brick in them. But I've still got some work to do to make this look more realistic. Paint washes or mixtures of acrylic paint and water are an amazing tool for achieving realism. Here I apply a thin wash of my desert sand color several times to start tying my brick colors together. Then I take my piece outside and spritz on some black wash using a spray bottle. This helps sort of blend the colors while making the piece look more worn and aged. After that all dries, I seal my paint job with Minowax Clear Satin Polyurethane Spray, which is the first step to applying mortar to brick. Now it's time to complete the look of these bricks by applying lightweight wall spackle in all the lines I carved at the start of the video. This will simulate brick mortar. With a destruction based piece like this, I also like to think about where the mortar could have broken off from the damage. In those areas, I either choose not to apply mortar at all or go very light. The trick is to use a straight edge to apply the mortar and then scrape off the excess without damaging the piece. You want to apply some pressure, but don't go crazy. From there, I take a microfiber cloth, dampen it, and then wipe away the remaining excess. I do that process several times until I'm satisfied with the look. All my walls are painted, so now I turn my attention to finishing the paint job on the base pieces. Anita's Charcoal Gray is a great color to paint asphalt with, especially when you dry brush it over a black base coat. I use that on the two sections of asphalt I created on my bases, making sure I dab off most of the paint on a dry paper towel before brushing it on. Then it's time to get the tile work done. I chose Vallejo Ivory as the initial color to go over my priming layer. This paint is thin out of the bottle, and I think having the darker tone under it creates an interesting color. I let the coat of ivory dry and then start applying various paint washes over top. First I use the desert sand wash I used on the brick earlier in the video and then while that was still wet I used a darker brown wash dropping it over much of the cracked tile areas to start selling the destruction. That all needs to dry before I apply some fine sand from my backyard. A good way to apply this is to put a coat of Mod Podge in the desired area then sprinkle down the sand and soak it all in with the Mod Podge water solution 
which locks the sand particles into place once dry. I also had some small sand particles scattered throughout the piece that I wanted to secure, so I switched from a dropper to a spray bottle and doused the whole piece with the solution. After some drying time, I break out my airbrush and get to work on painting the dirt to look more like dirt. It's weird to say that out loud, but sometimes you need to do that. I did this with a coat of Vallejo Desert Sand and then a coat of Vallejo Ivory over top. In my opinion, the coat of ivory really helps sell the fact that there's a ton of dust and debris and all kinds of things that you would see in an urban war zone. The one holdover I have before I can say my brick walls are finished is that I need to create and install a partially shattered window. I'm using a plexiglass cutting knife which you can find relatively cheap at Home Depot to score and snap the faux glass for my window. After I use the knife and T-square to get the shape of my window, I place it on the edge of my workbench and snap the plexiglass along the scored line for a clean break. I always make sure I wear my safety goggles when I do something like this. I use the edge of the plexiglass knife and a rubber mallet to work on making some bullet holes and cracks in my glass, allowing the pressure I apply to determine where my points of breakage happen. To further weather the glass, I use a nail file to sand down the entire piece and give a little extra effort on the edges and damaged areas to accentuate them. Once I am satisfied with the state of the broken window glass, I use clear Gorilla Glue to glue the plexiglass to my custom designed 3D printed PLA window frames, which you can download if you're a paid Patreon member. Speaking of Patreon, I'd like to give a special shout out to my patrons. Thank you for powering Basco Toys with your support. After letting the glue set overnight, I use Hot Wire Foam Factory Styro Goo to glue and install my shattered window in the brick wall. And then I use super glue to strategically place small shards of glass permanently on the diorama base. You're probably wondering which YouTuber I made this for, aren't you? This diorama is from my friend, The Amazing, one of the best action figure photographers and reviewers in the world. I really cannot wait to see what he does with this. And now that you know who I made this for, I wanna explain some of the decisions I made when I was constructing the piece. The first is that because The Amazing is doing action figure reviews and action figure photography, I wanted him to have some real versatility in this, which is why I made the walls interchangeable. I showed it in the beginning, but you can swap these out because I put the magnets in the exact same spot for both of these areas. So you've got that one and this one. And on top of that, he can, you know, manipulate these things. He can move, uh, take these off and move them around however he needs to cover up areas in the background or anything like that, which I think is really going to be valuable for him. D Amazing is known for posing his figures in all kinds of amazing poses. And if you have some ground area that makes that more difficult, then that's not a good thing. So I made sure that I added some loose rubble, but I didn't want to go too crazy with adding any other bricks or any kind of debris like that, that would kind of be an obstacle for him when he's trying to do action figure photography or do reviews. Thank you for taking the time to watch me make this diorama. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll watch this video next. Vasco Toys, 
action figure dioramas and props.